What's going on, y'all? It's your man, Supreme, and welcome back to The Real Rap Show. And this is episode 33 of The Real Rap Show, the story of Washington, D.C.'s Wayne Perry. Ayo, hey, follow The Real Rap Show on Instagram at It's The Real Rap Show. Now, before we get this episode started, I would like to say thank you to everyone who has been tuning in to The Real Rap Show since day one. Everyone who has been donating to the channel, everyone in the comments, and also everyone who gives me great feedback about the show. Now, let's get this episode started. A lot of people think Wayne Perry was a drug dealer. When you hear his name mentioned along with names like Rafael Edmonds and Al Poe and others. But Wayne Perry was not a drug dealer. In fact, Wayne Perry was a professional extortionist. He preyed on drug dealers and made them pay him in order for them to keep selling drugs. And if the person didn't pay, Wayne would kill whoever it was in broad daylight. It didn't matter where the person was, a party, a barbershop, he'd come and kill you right there. And in 1989, Wayne Perry was the most feared man in D.C. But let me take y'all back a little bit to the early days of young Wayne Perry. At 14 years old, Wayne Perry had a little crew of dudes that he was running around D.C. with doing little mischievous stuff, shoplifting, stealing people's credit cards, you know, things like that. But Wayne Perry wanted to be the leader of his little crew. He wanted to be in charge of everything. So someone that they knew asked Wayne Perry at 14 years old to kill somebody for them. And Wayne Perry at that time wanted to get his hands on a gun because he wanted to show his little friends in the crew that he had a real gun and with the gun he would be the leader of the crew and be in charge of everything. And Wayne Perry agreed and told this person, okay, cool, I would do it if you give me a gun. And the person said, okay, I'll give you a gun if you do this for me. Now, this person that Wayne Perry was sent to kill was a grown man. Now, when Wayne Perry got around the man, somehow Wayne Perry, 14 years old, told the dude to buy him something from the store. So the store was downstairs in like a basement, and Wayne Perry is walking behind the man. And when the man walked down the steps to go inside the store, Wayne Perry pulled out a revolver and emptied the whole round into the back of the man's head. When Wayne Perry gets back to the dude who sent him to kill the dude, Wayne Perry is in tears. And the guy goes, you know, what's wrong with you? What's going on? Wayne Perry tells the dude, I don't think I did it right because all of the bullets are still inside of the gun. Now, at 14 years old, and that being the first gun that Wayne Perry ever touched, he didn't know the difference between a revolver and an automatic. He thought that by still seeing the shell casings inside the chamber that he didn't kill the guy. But... Just to let you guys know how wicked Wayne Perry's mind was at 14 years old, he was more upset at the fact that he thought that he didn't do it right because the shell casings were still inside the gun. Rather than him being upset that at 14 years old and afraid, he had just committed a murder. Fast forward and the year is 1989 and the crack era in D.C. is at an all-time high. The murder rate in Washington, D.C. was at an all-time high. Wayne Perry, now much older, is a member of a notorious drug dealing crew called the R Street Crew. Wayne Perry is now a notorious killer slash hitman responsible at that time for more than 50 murders. Wayne Perry had everybody in D.C. scared to death of him. Wayne Perry would pull up on drug dealers and just simply tell him, yo, what y'all got for me? And dudes would start digging in their pocket, giving him all kinds of money because they knew his reputation. They knew that if they did not pay, they would be murdered. And for some of the dealers, some of the big ones, this would be like a weekly stop by that Wayne would do. And he would pull up on these guys every Friday and get free money from the guys just so they could continue doing what they're doing and also stay alive. There was a girl by the name of Evelyn Carter. Now, Evelyn Carter was the type of girl around D.C. that was messing with all the big-time drug dealers. All the guys that was getting some real money had been in the bed with her. And Wayne Perry liked Evelyn Carter. 
And at this time, Wayne Perry is who he is. He's a very powerful dude in the streets. Everybody knows who he is and what he's about. But to Evelyn Carter, she didn't think Perry was the type of guy for her because, like I said, she was into the flashy guys, the nice cars, the guys that was getting all the money. Wayne Perry was just known to be a shooter, and she was more about the dudes that was getting to the money. So she didn't give Wayne Perry no play at all and kind of brushed him off, and Wayne Perry didn't like that. So Wayne Perry then tells his friend Thomas, yo, I want you to go take care of this girl for me. So he gives the dude a weapon and tells him, go kill the girl. Now the dude goes and catches the girl coming outside of a concert and um, walks up to her in front of everybody and empties a clip right into her stomach. But the girl falls onto the floor and she's moving around and she's wiggling and he runs off but not too far from the scene. And he kind of sticks around to see if the girl is going to die. But the ambulance comes and gets the girl. Now, when the dude gets back to Wayne, he tells Wayne Perry, yeah, I did it. The ambulance came and got her. So Wayne Perry said, what do you mean the ambulance came and got her? You didn't kill her? He said, yeah, I shot her a couple of times in the stomach. The ambulance came and got her. And Wayne Perry was pissed off at the dude because Wayne Perry said, how do you know she's dead if the ambulance came and got her? You didn't shoot her in the head? And the dude said no. So Wayne Perry got pissed off at the dude and started yelling all in his face. So he walked up to a dude that was an innocent bystander dude that wasn't even a part of their shit. The dude was standing over there on the payphone, minding his business. Wayne Perry goes up to this dude and blows his head off in broad daylight and then walks back over to Thomas and tells him, that's how you kill somebody. Wayne Perry was also a ladies' man. He had a number of girlfriends. It's rumored that Wayne Perry would kill somebody in the hood just to lure women to the funeral. For instance... If somebody in the hood was getting a lot of money and Wayne Perry had his eye on the dude and knew that the dude was popular with a lot of the women that was around the town, Wayne Perry would simply kill the dude because he knew that when the guy's funeral came, all the women would come to this guy's funeral. And at the funeral, Wayne Perry would then use that opportunity to meet all these different women. And it's rumored that after these funerals, he would leave with like eight or nine different phone numbers of women that he bagged at the funeral. A lot of the murders that Wayne Perry committed were women. A lot of chicks at that time was messing around with a lot of the big time dudes that was getting money. And it was a lot of pillow talking going on where some of these girls were telling vital information to these dudes. And when Wayne Perry would find out who these women were, he would simply go and kill these women. It was a lot of dudes getting set up by these girls, a lot of street gossip, a lot of he say, she say. And like I said, Wayne Perry would find out where these women were and he would simply take care of them. Another woman that Wayne Perry murdered went by the name of Yolanda Burley. Now, Yolanda Burley was murdered by Wayne Perry simply because he met her somewhere and Yolanda asked him what is his real name and what does he do for a living. And to Wayne Perry, that was a red flag because that scared him that she asked his real name and what did he do for a living. And Wayne Perry thought that she was probably working with the police or something like that. And Wayne Perry simply killed Yolanda Burley. Everyone who had knowledge of who Wayne Perry was and what he was about, whenever you would see this guy out at night, you knew someone was about to die because Wayne Perry was the type of guy that didn't come outside in the daytime. Whenever you would see him out, it would be late at night at a party or something like that. And you knew that whenever you saw him, he would either be looking for someone to kill or someone to extort. I mean, this dude was like a UFO sighting. Everyone was like, yo, I think I saw Wayne. That looked like Wayne over there. And everyone was scared to death of the sight or even hearing that this dude was around. Now, hit that like button and tear those comments up because I want to know from y'all. Hey, yo, Washington, D.C., 
Is y'all tuned in? Let us know in the comments some of the things that y'all know about Wayne Perry that we don't know about Wayne Perry. Back to the story. It is now the summer of 1990, and now Wayne Perry has been hired to be a hitman for New York's notorious drug kingpin and murderer, Alberto Alpo Martinez. Alpo, who relocated to D.C. after he killed his best friend, Richard Porter, over a drug dispute has now relocated his operation to DC and has hired Wayne Perry to be his hitman to kill and extort and instill fear in other drug dealers within the DC area. One of the most famous murders that Alpo and Wayne Perry did together while they were in DC was the killing of Demencio Benson, whose nickname is Montana and was a drug dealer from New York City. But when it comes to the murder of Demencio Benson, there's two different stories that I heard about what happened to him. One of the stories is that Demencio was messing around with Alpo's girlfriend and Alpo didn't like that. The second story is that Alpo was on the run from some dudes in New York who wanted to kill him. Demencio knew who the dudes was and when he saw Alpo in D.C., Alpo knew that Demencio would go back to New York and tell these dudes, yo, I saw this dude out there in D.C., that's where he's at. So Alpo felt like he couldn't let Demencio leave the basketball game that day because he knew that Demencio would tell people where he's at. Alpo felt like Demencio had to die that day. At this basketball game, there's hundreds of people out there, and Alpo and Demencio had some sort of argument. After the dispute, Alpo turns his back and walks away. Wayne Perry walks up to Demencio and shoots him in the head and kills him right there in front of everybody. In the summer of 1990, Alpo and Wayne Perry committed over 25 murders. Another female that Wayne Perry killed was named Alveda Hopkins. Alveda Hopkins was killed by Wayne Perry because he heard through a source that she was going to testify against him in a murder case and Wayne Perry had her picked up by somebody one night and took her somewhere and killed her and dumped her body on the side of the road. Wayne Silk Perry and Alberto Alpo Martinez were both arrested by the feds in 1991 and charged with numerous murders and also running a continuous criminal enterprise. Alpo, who immediately started cooperating with the feds, pleaded guilty to 14 murders and told the feds all the murders that Wayne Perry did and others, which made Wayne Perry the first person in D.C. to be eligible for the death penalty. Wayne Perry then pleaded guilty to all those murders and received life without parole five times. Alpo, who came home from the feds in 2015 and given a new name, decided that at 50 years old, he wanted to go back to his hometown of Harlem, New York City and continue his drug activities from the 1980s. Alpo was killed in Harlem on October 31st, 2021. Wayne Perry is currently on 23-hour lockdown at Florence, Colorado's Supermax Prison ADX. It's your man Supreme. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Real Rap Show. And this was episode 33 of The Real Rap Show. The story of Washington, D.C.'s Wayne Perry. Subscribe to the channel and don't forget to follow It's The Real Rap Show on Instagram. Y'all stay safe out there. Real Rap.